Hey there, East here with Lucky Defenders. Today's video, we're gonna be doing the IID gap tool on the 2020 L663 Defender. Couple of mods that I wanna do, see what we can get around with and just roll through it and see how difficult or how easy it's gonna to be to work with this tool. And uh, hopefully it'll be pretty easy. I am anticipating a couple of issues along the way. So we'll run this journey together. Gap tool has been downloaded, the app onto my phone. I'm gonna open up the box. Inside we've got the tool. One-handed, gonna try and get that out. Of course it's not gonna work as well as we hoped. And cable at the bottom to connect to the computer for the update. Uh, I'm going to plug this into the vehicle get the, the phone, uh, which I've got uh, an account set up, gonna get this hooked up and get it all connected and talking to the unit. I registered the product, gonna go here and update, gonna go into the ID tool updater. Now I have already downloaded this for the Mac OS and I went in, I wanted to make sure it was gonna work. So it is updated and everything is the newest software version plugged in right here with the tool. I did have to get this little adapter, which wasn't too difficult. So next thing we're gonna do is go into the programming mode within the tool through the phone. Down in the footwell, there is the OBD2 port. Gonna plug that in. Looks like it's doing something. Tool's plugged in. If you can see my phone properly, I'm gonna search for the tool. Tool found, gathering information, all loaded up, and looks like we are ready to go. Another important thing to do is keep a record of your existing config files before you start changing anything in the event that you need to go back. So you go into your file CCF files, it'll read all of the existing files down at the bottom here. You can export and email them to yourself so that if you need to revert anything, you can. Apps running. What we are going to do is go into the car config files. It's going to read the complete list. Hopefully that glare that's on there isn't too distracting. It's probably the better way to do it. We're going to go into the complete list. Now one of the things that uh, has thrown me off a little bit here with it are just all the options that you get here. And one of the things that I have noticed in the research is this isn't as easy as what perhaps I had thought it was going to be, naively perhaps thought it was going to be, with a select this option and it will enable said function, right? So what I'm going to do is a little bit of research here to figure out what options need to be selected in what various sections of the various control modules for each function to be enabled. So give me a little bit of time. Let me figure out how to do that. And... All right. So a couple of things that I have uh, learned here is you need to go into a lot of settings to change a lot of things to get to what you want, right? So at the moment, I'm trying to get dynamic set up. It's a two liter, I, the truth is it doesn't need it, but this is just one of the things that I'm going in to look for. So what you've got to do is you need to search for various functions. So the first one is 245. I found this is pretty useful. You can just search for it down in the bottom here and it'll give you a bunch of options as to what it is that you can change. So it said dynamic not fitted. You change it to dynamic with configurable screen I've gone in and I've changed a bunch of settings and I am going to see what's going to happen. So we're going to upload changes. It says upload these changes, a couple of changes that are going to go through. Engine's going to turn off automatically. I have got it running for the battery so that it doesn't go flat. And we're going to continue and keep everything going. And it's going to run through the cycle now of 
basically resetting everything. Now, one of the, the things that is a little bit frustrating with all of it, some of the stuff works really well. I did manage to get the uh, adaptive cruise control to work. That was pretty straightforward and easy. Dynamic isn't working as well, as well, as easy as I thought it would. Again, it's possible because this is the two liter motor. It just doesn't have that function and it seems that that would be silly for this anyway. But we're going to run through this and I'm going to show you guys the the whole process of getting it uploaded. It does take some time. The the hardest thing that I've come across to this point is going through the various features and what you have to select and what it's supposed to look like once you've selected everything. What I'll probably do is, and certainly let me preface this with use at your discretion. What I strongly suggest you don't do is take my advice for something to work and you brick your vehicle. So use at your own discretion. But what I'll do is I'll put in... The body of the of the video in the description uh i'm gonna go ahead and put everything that i've found so far and stuff that i've tried on the vehicle on mine and certainly use that if you have the tool if you're trying to figure something out like i say not all of them work this is one that I'm, i've tried for the third time now without success but i'm gonna try it one more time just to see what happens hopefully it loads up Files are almost done loading here. It's still running through a couple of, of checks and updates. What I do want to note that as I've been running through all of these updates, something that has actually helped is to turn the vehicle off, lock it, leave it for a minute or two and start it up again. That seems to be a lot of the uh, the fixes once everything has come through so let's have a look just started the vehicle what I just did now was the terrain response and what's weird is you can see up here it doesn't show that I have dynamic mode but on the screen you can clearly see at the back there it says that I should have it so I'm just messing around with the with the settings I've got to do a bit more investigation to see why it shows up on the dash but doesn't show up but doesn't show up on the program select so I'm gonna carry on doing some messing around here with it and just see what I can figure out certainly as I continue to figure it out and see what happens I will let you know what settings I've come up with and, and how I how I make out with this thing so hopefully we can get it figured out and you guys can be a bit easier than me fumbling around through this and, and use this as the tutorial right thanks I ended up going down some serious rabbit holes trying to figure out these CCF files and what configurations you have to select in order to get them to work properly some of the things are working some of the things aren't uh, I did an inordinate amount of, of research on online I found a couple of very helpful uh, websites that have got the CCF files and the configurations for you to set for each thing. So I'll put those down in, in the uh, comment section. If you come up with anything, certainly add it in. This can be a, a, running, a running list of things that people figure out. So let's keep on adding to it and keep on figuring it out.